Hi everyone, today from the desk of Greg Bodo, I'd just like to pull some snippets from various articles that I've been reading. Not the entire article, but here I read that where a Chicago financial planner is quoting, uh, what is an index annuity? For the securities regulators. Now, I think it's interesting that he starts right off with what is an index annuity and then starts quoting the securities regulators. That would be a little like talking about automobiles and quoting the insurance regulators. You know, the securities regulators do not regulate index annuities, which is the caption on the, quote, on the paragraph. What is an index annuity? Well, we're going to get to that for a minute, but I'm not sure what the author is getting at when he quotes the securities regulators, because you see, I want to make a point here. The securities regulators regulate securities. Whether they do a good job or a bad job is not the subject of today, but they regulate securities. An index annuity is in no way a security. To be a security by the securities regulator's own definition, you must have the opportunity to lose principal. Well, with an index annuity, you have no opportunity to lose principal. In fact, an index annuity is regulated by the insurance regulators by each state, which means you have, I believe, closer regulation by a state regulating its own state's activities rather than a national regulator monitoring the activities of the entire nation. But that's just my point of view. But getting back to what is an index annuity, an index annuity is a product that the consumer can participate in the increase in value by credited interest as a result of some market index going up. Let's pick the S&P 500. But since your money is not invested in the S&P 500, then you have no opportunity for your value to go down, as it would it be if it was invested in the S&P 500. The author of this particular article that I'm going from then summarized by saying, so an index annuity gives you more risk, but more potential return than a fixed annuity. Well, an index annuity doesn't give you any risk, but yes, it does give you more potential return than a fixed annuity. And then he goes on to talk about the increased risk or potential return of a variable annuity in the same sentence. I'm sorry, I don't understand this. That's like talking about Fords and Chevrolets and Mack trucks all in the same sen sentence, although they are forms of transportation. They're really mixing apples and oranges, and this author has done a very good job of confusing the subject that he's trying to to clarify, index annuities have less market risk than variable annuities. Well, again, that's confusing because index annuities have no market risk, so it's hard to have less risk than no market risk. He says index annuities have less market risk than variable annuities. Well, that part is true, except that index annuities have no market risk and variable annuities have a great deal of Commissions. market risk. Commissions typically run between 5 and 10% of the contract amount but this can sometimes be more or less. Well, I'd like to state about commissions because the unstated, but to me the obvious agenda here is to demonstrate that index annuities have commissions and managed financial accounts, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and so with a fee-only financial advisor would have a management fee. I'm certain that they're not working for free. So the question is not that you pay something as a consumer, it's what you pay and how you pay it. So let's talk about this five to 10% commissions on annuities. Well, in the first place, I don't know of an of annuity contract today in this marketplace that pays a 10% commission. Somewhere around 6 to 8% is typical and sometimes lower for shorter term annuities. But the point that's trying to be made here is that there is some untoward or unclean agenda in recommending an annuity product for a high commission rather than recommending a managed fee-only account where the consumer pays only a fee. So let's draw some comparisons here. I've taken the opportunity to illustrate a $100,000 investment just as a case in point. The illustrated growth is 5%. Well, I assume someone has put their, manage, their money to be managed with a financial advisor that charges a fee for the opportunity to have increased growth and value, so I've given the, given the example the benefit of the doubt. So the $100,000 value at 5% return over 10 years grows to a value of $142,000, a conservative example. Except here's where the plot thickens, because the management fee is 1% a year. So the management fee is $1,000 in the first year, and the management fee is $1,400 in the 10th year, and the cumulative management fee over that period of time is $12,000. Now let's go back to the author's original, original uh, concept that con commissions tend to run from 5 to 10%. Well, great. 
If we could say the commissions run at 6% on the typical index annuity, which is about right, then the commission would have been 6%, but the fee-only financial advisor actually earned 12%. If the fee-only advisor earned 12% and the index annuity commission was 8%, there still would be a 50% difference. 8% of $100,000 would have been $8,000 challenged one time. And the fee-only advisor's commission over time was $12,000, which by my arithmetic is 50% more than eight. My point is, oftentimes the fee-only world tries to make a point that a, that a financial advisor can be motivated to sell an index annuity for higher commission. In fact, it's not higher commission all, at all. It's lower commission. That doesn't even consider the advantage of receiving a bonus for an index annuity that the, that the uh, fee-only manager can't possibly offer. And finally, that the index annuity should never be compared to a fee-only managed product because the fee-only managed product has risk of loss. It's a security. Whereas the index annuity is not a security, this period of time where it actually incurred lower fees at the same rate of return had no opportunity for loss. I'm quoting now from another wealth management newsletter, which I was dated Monday, November 28th. And it starts off with, think twice about an index annuity. And then it makes the same three bullet points always that comes out in the news, but they're oftentimes distorted. Let me give you an example. Bullet point number one, high commissions up to 90%. Well, we dispelled that just a few minutes ago. Most products don't offer a 9% commission. I don't know of any that do and the average product offers 65 to 7%, but we talked about that earlier, comparing that to a fee-only investment advisor's 1% management fee. Then the next bullet point is surrender fees, as high as 20%. Uh, but it doesn't say surrender fees as low as 4%, does it? Surrender fees as high as 20%. I only know of one financial product in the marketplace that charges a 20% surrender fee in any year. However, what's not being told here as Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story, is the same financial product offers the consumer a 10% bonus on the way in first year, which they are totally vested in. So, if you do the arithmetic on a $100,000 investment, if you offer a product of $100,000, which garners a 10% bonus, you now have $110,000. And if you charge a penalty in the first year of 20%, well, after all, 10% of that 20% was not your money, it was a gift. I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong here. I'm, I'm saying that the bullet points are highly distorted with only half the facts. And finally, it says product, product complexity that makes it tough for anyone to know what they're buying. Well, my goodness, if somebody understands what they're buying in a brokerage account or manage money with stocks, bonds, and cash over a period of time, like say through 2008, I wonder how many of those consumer clients actually understood what they were buying. My point really is not to be totally on one side or totally the other. My point is suitability. If suitability for my client is for them to have a certain percentage of their assets or all of their manageable assets in the stock market and in a traditional fee-only managed account, we can do that. However, most of my clients being 65 and older, as I'm 65, I would say I bring the average age of our client down at this firm. But with most of our clients being older, they don't have the time to make the money back if they have another loss. So, back to suitability. How much of their money is appropriate to be in a comparative brokerage account with stocks, bonds, and cash and the attendant risk? The increase opportunity and the decrease opportunity. Because you see, in stocks, bonds, and cash, they have the opportunity for all of the increase in the market and the opportunity for all of the decrease in the market. Suitability. With an index annuity, they have the opportunity for some of the increase in market, limited by a cap, but none of the decrease in the market. As a matter of fact, I could demonstrate that anybody that wants to, if you put a cap on a financial product called a fixed index annuity, and the cap is as low as two and one quarter percent, meaning you'd never earn more than two and one quarter percent in an up market, and you'd never earn less than zero, meaning no decline in a down market. In fact, in most markets, you'd find that the cap that low, you would still have a result of a higher value over time. That assumes that there is, during that period of time, some rise in the market and some fall of the market. 
More to follow on, on that and the complexities. Thanks for joining me at the desk of Greg Bodo, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.